Hi guys, Ali Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips, Gotta Talk Fast. Kevin says I'm taking too long. Tank valves. Tank valves come in two basic designs. Now there's a dozen different variations on, on a, a standard tank valve. There's age valves and, and there's actually uh, <laughs> reserves, all kinds of them. But, uh, but going back over the years, there are two basic designs. This is your standard three-quarter inch tank valve. If you go back just a short ways, you will find some information on fitting this into a scuba tank properly. This is a standard, it's just as you see today, I mean, your good old 80 cubic foot tank, and it's got machine threads, the threads are straight. If, if you can see that the thread sides are perfectly straight. And it has an O-ring, a black O-ring up on there to, to cause a seal, create the seal. However, those are relatively new. Now, I say relatively new in my experience, uh, <laughs> the 60s, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing probably maybe I'm just guessing here, maybe 65, 1965, they started to come out. By 1970, they had pretty much taken over the market, and by 1980, the prior type of valve, the half-inch valve, was almost gone. But there are still some variations of a half-inch threaded valve out there. Some of the new steel tanks use half-inch threaded valves, and lots of other tanks, not scuba tanks, oxygen tanks, and gas tanks, uh, oxyacetylene and... Uh, and, uh, and other types of tanks uh, use, use this type of a valve. So I want to talk about it very briefly because there were some questions about it. So this is the older style, older type of valve, okay? And it looks very similar. A couple of differences. This does have a constant reserve on it. Now, if you're a scuba diver, you've been around any length of time, you know what a reserve is. A reserve is simply a device, on, usually on the valve, not always, occasionally it's on the regulator. But usually it's on the valve. And, and the reserve is, as its name implies, simply a device that saves a bit of air. It reserves a bit of air. So that when you run out of air, you're not really out of air. Then you can reach back, not with your hand, there's a rod or a cord, and this lever flips down, and that little bit of extra that's been saved, that little bit of reserve, comes out. Typically, the reserve is set for about 300 PSI, sometimes 500 PSI, which is good for four or five minutes, which is not very much. As I say to my advanced divers, the reserve valve gives you just enough air to realize you screwed up and you're going to pay for it. <laughs> anyway, I suppose it's better than nothing. Those are gone now. Now we use SPG, so we know how much air we have. So if we're on a deep dive where that 300 PSI would be useless, and it'd be gone before you went up very far, now you can actually look at your pressure gauge and see that you are at 1,000 PSI, it's time to go up. Okay? These told you that you're out of air. I don't want to know I'm out of air. I want to know how much I have. Anyway, that's the philosophy. Let's get rid of that. So this valve is very similar to the new valves, except for the reserve. If we hide the reserve, you can see it's the same. There's the valve, the yoke tank, the regular yoke goes here. It has a knob on the side like that. It has a big nut there and some threads and a, and a dip tube. It's called the dip tube. So what's the difference between this and that valve? Well, the first difference that you need to appreciate is, if you look closely right here, Kevin, can you see these threads where my fingers are? These threads are not even. They taper. Can you see that? Are you able to see that in there, Kevin? That these threads taper. They're wider at the top and they come closer at the bottom. Taper. It's a seal. So it's a, what do you want to call it? A jam seal. How about that? Jam. Not raspberry jam. Jam. It jams in there. So the metal threads of this and the metal threads in the tank are so tight together, air can't get through. Well, that's almost true. Today, and that's what they used to do years ago. They used to actually be jammed, metal to metal. But now they do something a little bit different. I'm going to take this valve. This is a half-inch valve out of this old steel tank. You don't need to see that, Kevin. I'm going to pull this out of this tank. <clears throat> and this is the same type of valve. I'm going to hold the two up. You can see they're almost the same. Both of these have a reserve, okay, on your right side, and a knob on your left side, okay? So, but if I take the one I just took out and hide that, again, you've just got a standard scuba tank valve, right? Yoke goes on here, knob on and off, threads, dip tube. But you see here on these threads, you see what's at the top? There's something white up there. What the heck is that? Well, that is Teflon tape. So these days, when we install a half-inch valve into a scuba tank, we use Teflon tape. And this is critical, very important. The Teflon tape does two things. The first thing it does is it lubricates the action of the valve going in so that the metal-to-metal -metal doesn't grab and grip and maybe tear and injure the threads as it's being forced in, because it is forced in. Not like a three-quarter inch valve. Well, check that video about how to properly install a scuba valve. You'll see, those aren't forced in at all. They're just 
tap them in lightly with a little rubber hammer. These are forced in under a great deal of force. So as the metal to metal happens, sometimes they can gall in there and the, and the threads can strip or the tank threads can strip. So the first thing that the Teflon tape does is it lubricates it slightly so it spins in more smoothly. And the second thing is it actually creates a bit of a seal. It helps it to seal. So here's what happens. Let's assume we want to install this half inch valve in our tank. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing, I'm assuming that you've checked the valve, the valve is in good shape, it's all clean and ready to go. You've cleaned all the threads and of course your tank has been inspected. So now you take your Teflon tape, now, like that, unroll it all, yeah, like a toilet paper roll. Look, Chris will pick that up. We're here at Chris's dive store, uh, Simcoe, dive, uh, Simcoe Diving in Barrie, Ontario, and I'm using his stuff. <laughs> you take your, 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 your tape like this and you wrap it around, starting at the bottom, and you wrap it around with about one half of the width of the tape overlapping. So one half, you around like that, all the way around. And you have to go this way. Are you watching this, Kevin? <clears throat> you have to go this way. That is, from your side, it looks like I'm going clockwise around the valve, all the way around, and you tear it off. Smooth it like so, and now you're all set to install it. You have to go that way, that way around. You cannot go this way around. What's the difference? Well, because you have to go clockwise, because now you're going to put it into the tank, and you're going to turn it clockwise to go in. So as you turn it clockwise, the tape is not being unraveled. In fact, it's going in the same direction, so it actually tightens the tape up. If you, if you put the tape on the other way, as you turn this valve in, the tape gets undone. It doesn't do any good. And so now you would take this valve and insert it into the tank, and just turn it down, uh, right down as far as you possibly can. Now, when you turn it down as far as you possibly can, you're going to find that uh, it doesn't go all the way in. Unlike the three-quarter inch, the standard valve that's in your good old 80 aluminum, a half-inch valve does not go all the way down. With, the, with a modern valve, the valve, this part right here, goes right down and touches the cylinder. Not with these. No way. No. This goes down you know, tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, and it gets, it gets harder and harder, and you keep forcing it down until you can't force it anymore. I had a very good friend, Tom, who was extremely well known all over, all over the, the world, actually, uh, for his technical expertise with Scooby equipment. And his specialty was <clears throat> hydrostatic testing and valves. And I remember Tom, he was not a small man, six foot two, 180 pounds. He used to have a wrench, a big wrench, with a three foot bar on the end of it. And he would put that on these half inch valves and force it in. He had a big thing to clamp the tank. He put that bar like this, put it in as far as he could pull it. There is no torque value. There is no force value. None of the books tell you how, how hard to put, put this in. It just goes in as far as you can possibly turn it uh, with a great deal of force. Now, <clears throat> the important thing is, not the amount of force, but the important thing is, as I mentioned, that the valve must not touch the cylinder. There must always be three threads minimum showing because that indicates that the valve was sealing. If the valve actually came down and touched the top of the cylinder, gosh, you can't be sure it's in tight enough. Maybe the valve hit the top of the cylinder before the threads were tight. You see? So you put this in, the biggest wrench you can find, carefully, of course, and you force it down in there as far as you can possibly go, making sure there's at least three threads still sticking out. And there you go. It's installed. Just that easy. So there you go, there's some basic information on half-inch tank valves, a little bit of information that might help you to understand how they worked, how they're different, and a little bit of information on how they're installed. I found it kind of interesting. I'm not sure if this is a vintage scuba or a new scuba, but these are still used. There are some new steel tanks, I understand, that are using a half-inch valve. And maybe it's of interest to you anyway. All right, there you go, that's it. Alec Pierce, scuba, off to the races. Are we going to the races today? Okay, bye-bye.